Amen, amen, amen. How about it for Peter, Paul, and Mary? That is Dr. Mark Rutland's joke. And I just had to, I, I, you only get so many opportunities to make a reference. Stephen, stay close by. Stephen's going to sing another song right here in just a second. Um, let's pray. Let's pray. Y'all uh, extend your hands toward me. Anoint me. Lord knows I need it. <laughs> Father God, thank you for the privilege to share your word with this congregation. God, I pray that you'll anoint their ears to hear. I pray that you'll anoint me. God, may I be like Samson. If you can just anoint me one more time so that I can be used for your glory. I will give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew 28, chapter, uh, Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Uh, if I could give a, uh, a title to this message, uh, I would call it A Picture of Christianity. A Picture of Christianity. Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a man where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Can you say amen to the reading of God's word? You may be seated. Woo! All right, so this passage of scripture has a name. It's referred to as, uh, well, does anybody know the name? The Great Commission. That's good. Woo, we got some scholars in the house. The Great Commission, big. The commandment of the church, the marching orders of what the church is supposed to do. It's kind of short when you think about it. You got the whole Bible, the whole Bible, dens of lions, Noah's Ark, David, everything David went through, King David, the, the children of Israel being rescued from Egypt, the crucifixion and the resurrection, the entire book of Revelation, and the mission of the church is two verses of scripture. I kind of think God knew what he was doing. If he made it any longer, we would have screwed it up. <laughs> Honestly, since it's two verses of scripture, we, we do a good job of screwing it up as it is. But the Great Commission is very special because the Great Commission will make you all that God intended you to be. Following the Great Commission lets you fulfill the purpose of the church. But there are many people who never fully fulfill the Great Commission. They can attend church, play an instrument, sing in the choir, but never really become what they were meant to be. Stephen, come to the piano. Now, uh, I asked Stephen to sing this song, and I'm going to throw this out here right at the top. Well, anybody know what Spotify Wrapped is? Who? so man, I'm a little bit younger than some of y'all. That feels good, actually. I'm going to take that. All right, so uh, they have Spotify wrapped, Apple Music Replay. What happens is the music streaming services where you listen to music these days, toward the end of the year, they send you a link and you can go and it shows you a summarization of all the, the stuff you've listened to this year. They'll say, these are your favorite artists. This is how many hours you listen to music. This is, these are all the, uh, your favorite songs. And it's very interesting. It kind of shows you where you were throughout the year. Now, I'm going to give you a very quick, um, just, this is just a side thing. As a professional musician, you very rarely get to listen to music for yourself. <laughs> Almost every time I get in the car, I'm listening to something for something I'm, that's coming up playing, uh, such as the... Uh, program for the choir uh, program that's going to be this Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. featuring the Bartons, the Beeford Church of God Choir and the orchestra. That's a plug for Pastor Bob. I did it, Pastor Bob. But the, uh, 
I love listening to that stuff, but you don't always get to listen to it for yourself. But this year, when I was going through my, my wrapped, my things that I've listened to, this song came up, and it's one of my favorite songs, and Stephen's going to sing it. Uh, I asked him to just a few days ago, so he's, he's just now learning it. That's very good. And it is, it's done by a jazz artist by the name of Cody Fry. It, it's not a gospel song, but it has some, there's some good gospel in it. And so I want you to listen, listen to the words of it. It is, I'll give you a brief introduction of what the song is about. It's on the surface. It is a song about putting your phone down, being more present in the day-to-day -day moment, not allowing life to pass you by. Listen to Stephen. I sit in my Ford outside restaurants and stores, reading about what's inside. I look up opinions about news and religion so I don't have to use my own mind. I should call my friends, but I read their post instead. Dancing walks with no partner Nobody's holding your hand Singing duets as a solo The harmony's just in your head It's almost as if I have been everywhere Almost tasted the food, almost breathed Nobody's heart ever pounded By the feeling of being surrounded By pictures of mountains Everyone's right here on my phone Why do I feel so alone? with no partner nobody's holding your hand I do it's just so low if the harmony is all in your head I thought that I knew what a mountain was like till I stood in the valley and looked up to the sky and fell my heart beating faster The feeling I've been chasing after Something that no one can capture In pictures of mountains Whew. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. I got to tell you, if anybody who's dabbled in songwriting, when you hear lyrics like that, it just makes you want to quit. <laughs> Nobody's heart ever pounded from that feeling of being surrounded by pictures of mountains. I thought I knew what a mountain was like until I stood in the valley and looked up at the sky. The reason I asked Stephen to sing that song is because, well... <laughs> There's been a debate in this church for quite a little while, and Pastor Joey, while I'm here, I just wanted to put my finger on the scale, and that debate is, which is the better vacation spot, beach or mountains? And based off of this song selection of mine, you might be surprised by my choice. The answer is clearly mountains. Yeah. Clearly mountains. I, I, I do enjoy the mountains. Now, nothing wrong with the beach, nothing wrong with the beach, but if you're asking which one's better, it's clearly mountains. One of my favorite vacation spots is Alaska. If you have never been, I highly encourage you to go. It is a once in a lifetime experience, and I'm thankful for every time I've gotten to go. And they have some breathtaking mountains in Alaska. 
And our most recent trip to Alaska, I was actually listening to this song while we were on that trip. I had my headphones on and just had my shuffle on. It was just randomly going through songs. And this song came up. And that lyric, nobody's heart ever pounded from that feeling of being surrounded by pictures of mountains began circulating through my head. And we came to a place called Hatcher Pass, Alaska. And Hatcher Pass, the way it's organized, I'm gonna to try to paint a picture for you. You arrive and there's a hill as you go up this little trail. And as you're walking up the hill, it obscures your vision. You, you're not mountain climbing, it's not that steep, but it's steep enough so that as you're walking up, you can't really see everything around you. But as I was walking up that trail, I had those lyrics in my head, and to my right and to my left, these big jagged snowy peaks were sticking up from the earth, and I had those lyrics nobody's heart ever pounded from that feeling of being surrounded by pictures of mountains. And suddenly, I found myself at the crest of that hill, and I looked out, and I never will forget that feeling. It was like I was where the earth stopped and heaven began. The sun shone right here, and you could see sun flares coming off of it. And I looked down to my left, and there was an emerald green lake, and it was like God had just placed a jewel right in the earth right there. I stood there and I, I had those lyrics in my head still. And I was like, this is, this is what the artist was talking about. But then as I stood there, the lyrics, nobody's heart ever pounded from that feeling of being surrounded by pictures of mountains. Suddenly my perspective shifted. I've always, listen to that song and heard that song from the view of the man. The man in that song is saying, I should put my phone down. I can't capture this beauty any other way than to experience it. But as I was there, I stopped thinking about that from the perspective of the man. And I started thinking about it from the perspective of the mountain. What sense would it make for me to walk up to Hatcher Pass, Alaska, travel all the way from Georgia, get to Hatcher Pass, Alaska, and look out on those mountains, and the mountain to recede back into the earth, and hand me a stack of photographs from people who were there yesterday. It was a very interesting thought. And as I had it, I feel like I might have offended the mountain. I'm not one of these people who says they can hear trees or anything like that, don't get me wrong. But as I was there, it's almost like I was experiencing the rocks crying out. And it's like the mountain spoke to me and said, no, 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 no. I was here. I showed up. Take out your phone and take a picture. Take as many pictures as you want. I was here before you were born. And I'll be here long after you're gone. I've been here since the spirit of the Lord hovered over the waters and spoke and pulled me up from the deep. I've seen fires, I've seen floods, I've seen storms, I've seen earthquakes, and not one day since the dawn of time have I not shown up. So take a picture. But you know what I know, that anyone who has stood where you stand has felt what you feel and knows what I am. I am the mountain. It was then that I came to another conclusion. How many Christians live their lives as a photograph and never become the mountain that God made them to be and never fulfill the Great Commission. See, the mountain was created with purpose, and it will do that work until the Creator says otherwise. It's important to be a mountain because you will never move anyone living your life as a picture. The mission of the church 
is the Great Commission. You can't fulfill the Great Commission if you're living your life as a picture. Nobody's heart ever pounded from that feeling of being surrounded by pictures of mountains. I told this story to the youth a few weeks ago, but y'all aren't the youth. Close, y'all are close. But it's, I think it's very, very much ties in with a picture of Christianity and what it means to be a mountain. I had a, we had some family friends when I was 10 or 11 years old. And we, uh, just good family friends. We would, they had, uh, there was a mom and dad and they had two boys who were about me and my sister's age. And we would ride in the back of my dad's pickup truck in the bed and we'd go up to the gas station to get Flintstone push pops. And we'd run through the house and we'd wrestle and jump over the furniture so much that we'd get, our faces would get red, you know, and you'd have a headache at the end of the night. Y'all remember those kind of nights? Good family friends. And we knew each other through church. His family, my family did music and his family would come around and they would listen to us uh, wherever we traveled and they'd come to the house and have dinner. We'd go to their house and have dinner. And one day... The family was over at our house, and we lived at a, a place in the mountains, and it was a great place for a kid to grow up, grow up. There was this hill in the back through the woods, and when you get to the bottom of a hill, there was this creek, and we had this rock that would jut out, and it was like that rock in the Lion King, you know, the pride rock that would jut out over everything. You could hang on that and then fall into the water, just great, great place to be kid. So we were playing, and the object of the game was one, one group of kids is on one team, another group of kids is on another team, and we're trying to take over the other kid's base. Very sophisticated kid's game, right? So one of the boys in this family friend, uh, his, he was about my age, his name was Jordan. And Jordan and I, we decided we were going to sneak around the back and ambush these kids at their base over by the creek. So we were gonna go through the woods the long way, come up behind them. And as we were walking along, we, the other kids began to fade out. We couldn't really hear them anymore. They started getting quieter and quieter and soon it was just me and Jordan walking through the woods. And then Jordan turned to me and he said, hey man, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. He said, are you a Christian? And it was a, it was kind of a silly question to me because we knew each other through church. We'd sat next to each other in Sunday school. I said, yeah, Jordan, I'm a Christian. And then he said, I'm happy for you. I just, I just don't really understand it all. And then I committed one of the great sins of my life. I blew my friend off. And I said, well, sometimes God's ways are a mystery. I'm sure he'll reveal himself to you in time. And he said, yeah, you're right. And we went on about the rest of the day playing through the woods. We never spoke of it again. As time went on, our families drifted apart. No fighting, anything like that. It's just people move, someone gets a new job. And this was back before social media when you were a kid and your friend moved away, they were just gone. That was it. And I never heard much from Jordan after that until many years later, I was maybe 19 or 20 years old. I was in college and mom came home one day from work and she'd asked me and Katie to come up and help with the groceries. And as we were stacking up the groceries, she said, hey, do y'all remember the so-and-so family? And I said, yeah, they had the, the two kids, Jordan and, and his little brother. Mom said, yeah. She then began to fill me in on some of the details of their lives since we had last seen them. 
Jordan and his parents had gotten divorced. His mother had become addicted to drugs. She was on the street. Jordan's father passed away from an illness. His little brother died of a drug overdose. And Jordan, to cope with it all, joined a gang. And as part of his initiation into this gang, they found a stranger out jogging after work. And they killed him. And then my friend, who I rode in the back of my dad's pickup truck with to get Flintstones push pops at the gas station, my friend that I would run through the house with until we had headaches, my friend who asked me about Jesus during a walk through the woods had to dispose of the body. In the end, they were caught and Jordan went to prison. And to this day, I do not know where my friend is. I have looked. It's like he's a ghost. My friend did not need someone who could sing a very good worship song. He did not need someone who could recite every book of the Bible. He needed somebody who could follow two verses of scripture. Just two. Not all of it, just two. He needed a mountain and I gave him a photograph. And this was one of the hardest lessons that I have learned as a young Christian. When you live your life as a photograph, it doesn't just affect you. You can never move anyone living your life as a photograph. There are many people that they may have an informed opinion about you. But our goal is to get them to say, I thought I knew what a Christian was like until I stood in front of one and looked him in the eye. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. You know, I have, I've had some pretty mighty mountains in my life, and I could go on and on and on talking about the mighty mountains I've had in my life, but I'm just gonna pick two. My grandmother and my grandfather, my mama and Papa O'Connor. I, I had no idea, my parents are here, I had no idea mom and dad were gonna be here. She's supposed to be up in Pigeon Ford, but she, she came by here, so thank y'all. It's my, mom, my mom's uh, mother and father. One of the things I'm very thankful for is my heritage uh, in the church. 